Okay, so this is 8 ohms. So if we get 8 ohms, I'll multiply it by 3 because we want 3 amps. Uh, what's that? 8 and 8 is 16, plus 8 is 24. So this needs to be output in 24 volts. So we need to do this out thing again. So we need to out 20, 24 volts. So let's just zoom in and do this again. 24 volts. 24 20 There we go 20 well 23.9 volts uh, again this camera um, but you'll have to just take my word for it it says 23 Point nine, okay, 23.9, that's 24 volts, so if we connect this up now, 24 volts divided by 8 is 3, so 3 amps will flow through, approximately, so I'll need to get some wire now, and well, in fact the wire will have a small effect as well, but that doesn't really matter too much, so I'll get some wire, and we'll see what happens. So I've got two 7 centimeter pieces of thin wire, it's a single core wire, um, not ideal for 3 amps, but you know, whatever, it's only a very short distance, I'm only testing. So, I'll just strip, I don't know, say 2 centimeters of the uh, sheath off it. And there's 2. Now I need to bend these around. Now, uh, there might be a little bit of arcing here, so I don't want to go too crazy. I think what I'll do actually... I think I'll turn this off for the time being. Yeah, I'll take the ground wire out. So, let's put this in here and this one in here. Then, oh, look at that, perfect. Then, tighten these. And there we go, so we've got an 8 ohm resistor in there, 100 watts, so let's just make sure now, so uh, what is amps multiplied by volts, so we've got 24, um, 24 volts, 3 amps, that's 75 watts, wow that's going to get really hot, uh, I'm going to test this for, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe, something like that, so uh, let's see what happens. So it's drawing 400 milliamps, so that doesn't actually sound right. Let's change this again. 8.2, that's not right. And it doesn't seem to be coping very well, does it? 8 volts. And it can't cope. And it's getting very hot, so now I'm going to pull the plug there. So, uh, I would say it can't cope with that. Um, and that was 8 volts, 8 ohms. So, you know, 8 volts, 8 ohms, what's that? 8 divided by 8 is 1, 1 amp. Hmm. Let's try something else. So it's taken me a while to have a look in my stock to so see what I've got. That's actually about three amps, and it turns out that this this thing here is three point two amps. So that will be that will be ideal. So I'll just show you. It's an automotive bulb, and on the DC power supply now, it says twelve volts. Well, hang on a minute, it doesn't at the moment. Now it does, and it says three point two amps. Three point two amps. So there we go. I'll have to remember this middle one's ground. So that's three point two amps. So um. I'll try again now. 3.2 amps. Okay, so I've got this 3 amp bulb now. and It's going to have to point that way. Uh, I've set the thing to 12 volts and let's see if it copes. I hope it doesn't like arc and spark. It's saying 2 volts. Oh no, it is doing it. It is doing it. 3... Well anyway, I've just setted that thing and under 12 volts it takes 3 amps. 
and here you can see that I'm trying to get 12 volts out of it and it's just not working. I've got 31 volts fed into the uh, start bit and I set this to 12 volts and as soon as I put the load on it's shot down. Uh, so basically it just can't handle it. It can't handle it. It's shot down to 2 volts. So is it getting hot? Yeah, it's getting hot. So I'll turn that off straight away. Yeah, it can't handle it. It did try, but it failed. So, um, yeah, so can it deal with 3 amps? Not at all. Um, I tried the resistor, which, okay, it was a bit of a rough calculation. I used an 8 ohm resistor and it couldn't handle it. Um, which I could have altered the voltage, I suppose, and whatever. I did have 24 volts, which 24 volts with a resistance of 8 ohms should be around about 3 amps. Then I tried this. This is a 12 volt thing. It consumes 3 amps. Uh, well, it doesn't consume, but it, it draws 3 amps of current. And I put that onto here, so I'd fed this with 31 volts or whatever it was, 12 volts out, attached this, and it should have drawn 3 amps, and it couldn't. So what happened is that the voltage dropped dramatically on here to 3 volts, and then uh, the thing just couldn't light. So, can it deal with 3 amps? Um, no. So what can it deal with? Um, well, I don't know, I'll keep trying. Okay, so I've got this bulb, and this is 1.85 amps under 12 volts, so um, let's see what happens now. I suppose, oh, looks like I might have to solder it. Um, do I want to do that? Yeah, I'll have to do that. Alright, so it's attached now. Let's see if I can get this to hover. Save burn or anything. Oh, there you go. That's handy. Right, so let's try again. You can't actually see it, but it does say 12 volts. Maybe you can see it now. There you go. 12.1. So that should be, um, what is it, 1.85 amps. 1.85 amps. Now, I know that there's quite a lot of heat coming off that already, actually. So, let's put it over there. Right, now what I want to do is measure the temperature of the chip. If it's getting ridiculous, then I'll have to turn it off. Okay, it's a few minutes later, and it's now 75. Okay, so I've been doing some messing about, uh, testing different voltages, allowing different amounts of current to pass, uh, and researching. And it seems that this module can actually, or the chip, it can actually go up to 125 degrees Celsius without any real problems. According to the documentation, that seems to be okay. So. Um, it seems excessive to me, and all these other components are quite hot to the touch. I think they must be about 70, 82. No, 50, 60, 80, 80-ish. Um, but it seems that that is actually okay. Um, so, um, it seems that it can go up to 125 degrees, which in my opinion is, is way over the top. And this is 1.85 amps, or around that, maybe 1.9 or something like that. And in my opinion, this is, it's too much, it's too hot. Um, now the manufacturers, however, they, they seem to think that's okay. Um, at 2 amps, I'd say, you know, it's, it's starting to need a heat sink. Um, and even then, it, the other components will still be quite hot. So. I'm saying the actual amperage that I'd probably use this for is is around about 1 amp and 2 amps maximum. 2 amps maximum and even with 2 amps I think it needs a heat sink. So that's my review of that uh, or this module. But other than that I'd say the module's quite quite good really. You can see the input, you can see the output if you need to check. You can turn it off to save energy. It does the job so it's a, it's seems very good to me. Um, so yeah, I'd say 1 amps probably without a heatsink, 2 amps with a heatsink, I'd say no more than that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Bye!